Going fast and comfortably at the same time has been a thing ever since the inception of cars. For 120 years now, ever since the late 19th century, people have gone through a lifestyle change and people have realized that, oh my God, you can go fast, you can go comfortably and you can reach far places just for leisure. Oh my God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the beginning of GT cars. Even today, GT cars are all of the rave in the West. Which brings me to the car in question today, the BMW M8. This is BMW's fastest and most expensive offering in India. So that got me thinking, is a Super GT like the M8 even worth it in India? And if it is, should the M8 be your best mate? <laughs> See what I did there? Well, we all know that a Grand Tourer is a type of sports car that is designed for high speed and long distance driving due to a combination of performance and luxury attributes. But we all know what you are here for. So let's just get that out of the way. Well, this is more on the super side in the Super GT formula, with specs and figures putting most supercars to shame. A raging 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 under the hood and an all wheel drive system to keep it tame, the M8 can launch from 0 to 100 km an hour in 3.3 seconds. The common format in GT cars like these is usually a front engine, 2 plus 2 setup in the middle and rear wheel drive. However, in the M8, you get all wheel drive. The all wheel drive setup is an MX drive that lets you go completely rear wheel drive once you shut your DSC off. I would suggest you to do that with a lot of space and of course with a lot of cojones because boy oh boy this thing is fast. You put your foot down this thing will shoot you off to warp speed instantly. So the V8, the 600 horsepower twin turbo V8 has 750 Newton meters of torque and the two turbos are straight in the middle of the bank of the V. So what that does is let the colder gases go in quickly and the hot gases get out quickly. What that means is that once you put the throttle in, your first turbo will catch in will get full thrust mode by like 2000 rpm and then once you're in 4000 4500 rpm your second turbo kicks in and then it's just a non-stop fight with this bavarian roided muscle man so with this behemoth of an engine and let's be quite honest quite a heavy car 1.9 tons you would think that this car would feel quite heavy and hefty however when you are punching it through the corners it's quite light and quite stiff uh, it's because of the stiffer suspension the chassis has been stiffened up stiffer dampers which do make a difference you are full of confidence during when you're chucking it into the corners and overall the chassis is super balanced so wherever you go and you chuck it around it doesn't feel that heavy it's quite agile and it's quite composed there is quite a lot of grip in the tire so if you're going to try and lose some traction you're going to be going really really fast and you're going to have to need a lot of space but otherwise it's pretty pretty docile and in terms of can you have this as a car in India well it can do everything 90% of the bumps it takes it there are those 10% that you need to go sideways but otherwise 128 millimeters of uh, ground clearance is more than enough uh, in Indian roads now that they're getting good
Now that we have established that the M8 is a supercar in a classy suit, what about the suit itself? From the outside, the M8 is a complete stunner. When you look at it, the first thing that you notice in the front is the wide grille in the M8. It's not the M4 hideous grille, but it's just a little wider than the older signature grille, so that it makes it a little meaty and a little... However, it is much better than the M4, which I think looks disgusting. The aggressive and opulent in-your-face grill is all good, but from the side, you can really notice that you have a really long bonnet with a massive V8 in it, a really low stance and a wide rear section, which makes the car look like such a fast car. It's doing 250 right here in the parking spot, doesn't it? But the back end has to be the prettiest part about the car. It's wide, low and angular. The tail lights swoop around to make the back look even wider. The quad tail pipes, the small boot spoiler, all tie in to give the M8 a rear end that is super unique and literally on steroids. A GT car should always be the perfect blend between performance and luxury. We know that the M8 has quite a lot of performance. But in terms of luxury, well, it is got all the bells and whistles, but the there are a few discrepancies, shall I say. There are a lot of pieces of plastic all over, uh, the dashboard, the paddles, the indicators, but some people would argue that this understated familiar vibe because this is pretty much like a 3 series, a 2 series, a 5 series all the way inside, they'd, they'd argue that this would be a bit more familiar and a little more comfortable. However, I'd argue otherwise mate, this is something that you really don't want to see in a 3 crore rupee car. The instrument cluster is highly configurable with your regular navigation screen, trip data, etc. But my favorite mode is the M mode. You basically remove everything and you get a giant ref counter in front and the main focus you have is on your gear shifts. In the M8, you can literally fine tune each and every small detail of the driving experience to the max. You can fine tune the engine power delivery, the suspension, you can open the exhaust valves, you can tune your brake pedal feel, your drivetrain and even your gear shift intensity. That's the sign of a real M car. Because M cars are supposed to be driver's cars. Even if BMW has chosen the more GT route with this M8, the M8 is still a purebred M machine. It can literally make you giggle like a 5 year old with its absurd power and make you look like an important businessman when you need to. The M8 is the perfect flagship car in BMW's lineup and yes, you can say M is back.